when I made my film for the BBC, Earth Pilgrim, it was very risky of B the BBC to commission me to make a film from a spiritual and religious point of view. And uh, I called it Earth Pilgrim. Someone asked me, what is the difference between an Earth Pilgrim and an Earth Tourist? And I said, the difference between a tourist and a pilgrim is simply that a tourist travels in the landscape of desires. Whereas, a pilgrim travels in the landscape of love. And when we have desire, we want to escape from our busy life and also we want to conserve nature for our use, for our benefit, for human-centered, anthropocentric approach to nature, rather than seeing nature something in itself, in herself, intrinsically good, rather than that intrinsic quality of nature, when we see nature as a beneficial source for humans. That is the difference between, I would say, a more materialistic point of view of nature and a more spiritual view of nature. Even when we are here all conservationists, and many of you are maybe seeing the intrinsic value of nature, then you are earth pilgrims and you have a spiritual view. But when we are looking at nature as a collection of objects, and we are separate from nature, nature is out there, the wild animals, the plants, the forests, the rivers, the mountains, the birds, the bees, the wasps, even the earthworms. But out there, and we humans are separate from nature. And we are in charge of this natural world. We have come to believe that somehow humans have evolved and we are at the pinnacle of evolution. We are at the top. And somehow the natural world is there to serve human needs. And therefore we have to protect it. We have to conserve it so that we can derive the benefit of nature. That is, I think, still a very materialistic point of view. But when you go a step further and say, nature is not just out there, we are nature. There is nothing outside nature. The word nature in Latin comes from natura. So, for example, when a mother is pregnant, she would go to a midwife for a prenatal check. And after the birth of a baby, postnatal check. So the word natal and nature come from the same root. So what is nature? What is born is nature. Are we not born? How can we say we are not nature, nature is out there and we are somehow the rulers of nature. In the modern era, in the last 200-300 years, humanity has gone on a mission of conquering nature, controlling nature, finding out the secrets of nature. Even Francis Bacon said, we have to steal the secrets of nature for human benefit. So the entire project and mission of humanity all over the world, led by the Western science and technology, has been to conquer, subjugate, dominate nature. And we are still on that mission. And we are obsessed with economy. And actually, we have distorted the word economy when we say how the economy is doing in our country, we don't mean economy. We mean money supply. We have reduced the economy to money supply. 
The word economy means management of household. The Greek philosophers came up with this wonderful idea, oikos. And oikos means home. And not just your home where you live with your living room and kitchen and bedroom and bathroom and garden or your parents and children and husband and wife, your relationships. Not only that personal home, but in the wisdom of the Greek philosophers, the entire planet is our home. What a wonderful concept we have in our Western philosophy and Western culture. So the entire planet is our home and managing that entire planet is economy. Nomos means management. So economy, oikos, nomos, management of planet home. And again, as we are talking about economy, we also need to talk about ecology. And ecology, ecology, oikos and logos, the two words. Oikos means, again, planet home, and logos means the knowledge of planet home. Now, this is very strange to me that in our universities, we teach economy as a very important subject particularly the business schools are flourishing in every university. So economy has become at the top and hardly anyone teaches ecology. And if they do, it has become a little compartment of, of biology and ecology is to study a particular species. Now that's a very reductionist understanding of ecology. Ecology should be and it should mean the understanding and knowledge of the entire planet home and how all the relationships, all the interrelationships, interconnections, interdependence, functions and works. That is ecology. And hardly I have visited Harvard, Yale, Oxford, Cambridge, Bristol, hardly any university teaches ecology in that broad big picture way, in a kind of holistic manner. This is very reductionist and a very small scale. And even that small scale is very minute. You see, economy dominates. And I was, I, I am invited to speak next week on the 9th of November at LSE. And I can give you a small preview of what I'm going to say there. <laughs> and I'm going to suggest to LSE that they should change their name and from London School of Economics, LSE, they should become LSEE, -E. London School of Ecology and Economics, because without ecology, economics cannot work. I'm going to ask the professors and students at LSE to please tell me you are very highly educated and I may be an Indian peasant. I'm not so educated as you are. Tell me how you are going to manage something which you don't know. How are you going to manage something if you don't know? You have to know something before you manage. So you have to have ecology before you can have economy. And you are sending these thousands upon thousands of students coming from all over the world, from Africa, from India, from America, from South America, from Europe, and you are sending them back to their countries to manage economy, to manage the household. And they, you are sending them half educated. <laughs> Dear sir, professors and students and, and governors of LSE, please tell me half educated is worse than uneducated. <laughs> How, just imagine half-baked bread in your lunch. <laughs> what will happen? It will give you indigestion. Why we have our world, Britain included, America included, in such a great economic mess? Because the economy is being run by half-educated graduates. <laughs> had known how the relationships of all the species work and function, if they were educated in ecology and economy, 
there will be no economic mess because they will see what is true wealth what is true economy at the moment because they are half educated they think money is economy money is economy money is wealth our um, uh, chancellors and prime ministers say oh we have to respect business and bankers and we cannot tax bankers too much because they are the wealth creators complete nonsense <laughs> they are not the wealth creators they are the wealth destroyers who are what is they, they make money of course but money is not wealth money is not wealth we have forgotten our own english language wealth is well being wealth is nature the forest the rivers the land the soil that is real wealth the community the human intelligence the creativity and we have forgotten that and these bankers who are paid millions and millions of pounds and they are called wealth creators and the farmers the gardeners the makers of things protectors of the forests they are not wealth creators so they are paid 5 pounds an hour 10 pounds an hour only 2% of british population works on the land and we only eat but food has no importance if we have money in the banks we'll get food from kenya or from south africa or from california or somewhere we'll import we'll import golden delicious from france i tell you they are neither golden nor delicious <laughs> <laughs> so in unless we come back to ecology and respect nature and not only respect nature but identify with nature for me my religion is nature julian introduced me to say i'm a jain yes i was born in a jain family i was a jain monk i adhere to the principles of non violence of jains but to me truly my religion is nature my god is nature nature is my god in the indian jain tradition we don't have a separate creator god somewhere behind the clouds city and controlling the world in 6 days 5000 years ago he created the world and then went to sleep we don't have such separation such a dualism for us and for me even the earthworms have a divine presence somebody yesterday i was speaking i uh, know uh, on tuesday i was speaking in totnes and uh, someone asked me a question that look in buddhism they say that to be enlightened to reach nirvana the final enlightenment you have to take human birth i said this is completely wrong interpretation of buddhism If you go to Buddha Buddha stories when he is talking to this great terrorist violent man and I have written a book about it the Buddha and the terrorist this violent man Angulimala he is not convinced with the Buddha and his teachings and his arguments against violence the Buddha comes to an end of all language all the words have finished and nothing is happening and still the last resort the buddha picks up a lotus flower and holds in front of the angulimala be like lotus and angulimala gets converted nature that's a nature religion reverence for nature when the buddha is sitting in his meditation palms on top of each other and someone comes and asks the buddha where did you learn this compassion where did you learn this idea of forgiveness who is your teacher buddha lifts one hand and touches the earth and it's called bhumi sparsh mudra the posture of touching the earth and what is he saying <clears throat> He is saying that I learned the compassion and forgiveness and all the love and care and generosity from the earth. 